We think that the James Webb Space Telescope will find a lot of interesting things. We think that the James Webb Telescope just now found something amazing that is shaking the very foundations of what we know about the universe. We no longer know how the universe works because of this finding. As scientists update their theories, they find hidden cosmic secrets and see worlds that are beyond our wildest dreams. The Webb Space Telescope's most recent discovery has the scientific community on fire with excitement. With each observation, this state-of-the-art telescope takes us back in time and reveals new information about how the world came to be. What kind of thing could the huge item that Webb recently found be? How will this new information change the way we think about the universe and its mysteries? Let's find out. One of the most important things about the Webb is that it can look very far into the past, showing us the first stars and galaxies being formed. It helps scientists get a good look at the atmospheres of exoplanets where life could exist and at the strange features of black holes that are spread out in the universe. Black holes are strange cosmic forces that are made when stars explode. Their gravity pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. When an event horizon hits a black hole, it changes the shape of space and time. This area, the event horizon, is known as the point of no return, and it goes against the rules of current physics. Even though black holes are fairly new, the theory of relativity gave hints that they might exist before they were actually found. The theory says that space-time can be bent by masses that are dense enough to make the strange shapes we call black holes. Black holes were once invisible, but their natural gravitational pull on the matter around them makes them obvious. Different types of high-tech devices are used by space satellites, especially the web, to find clear signs that black holes exist. Scientists can figure out what a black hole is and how it works by watching how the stars and gas around it act. In particular, they study how close stars are affected by gravity to find out if they orbit or are pushed away by the strong gravitational pull. With its cutting-edge tools and unique features, the James Webb Space Telescope basically helps us look deeper into the world to find answers to problems that we thought were impossible to solve before. A black hole and a star send out a lot of high-energy radiation as they get closer. This makes the scene in the galaxy very bright. Even though black holes have a huge effect on the matter around them, they have a strange quality. The theory of relativity doesn't say how to measure their dimensions. This is because anything that gets too close to the black hole will be destroyed by its strong gravity. The no-hair theorem adds to our understanding of black holes. It says that a black hole only has three qualities that can be measured. Mass, electric charge, and angular momentum once it becomes stable after it forms. Black holes are simple, but their complexity is hidden by their simplicity. This is why it is hard to tell them apart, even if they have the same physical properties. By looking at the different kinds of black holes, we can see that they are a large family with many unique traits. The first type of black hole is one with the mass of a star. This group is the tiniest. It weighs between 1 and 100 times the sun's mass. The supermassive black holes are on the other end. They are millions or even billions of times heavier than the sun. Scientists think that supermassive black holes with more mass than 1,000 suns were formed when huge stars died off in the early universe. There are black holes in the middle rank that are somewhere between star and supermassive black holes. Also, not like most people think, some black holes are pretty small, almost as small as an atom. I agree that it is hard to think or believe that supermassive stars can be so small, but still have such a huge mass, even more than a whole mountain. It doesn't matter what, this is the truth. As you look out over the Milky Way, you can see that the universe is full of black holes, each with a mass of millions of solar masses. Large black holes tend to stay in the middle of galaxies, including our own Milky Way. This is based on both theory and fact. Sagittarius A asterisk is a giant black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. It has the same mass as about 4 million suns, which makes it the biggest object in its area. Scientists have been interested in black holes for decades because they are very complicated. This is why they are the subject of more and more study. It is possible to test many ideas that have deep roots in general relativity and the quantum domain in these strange structures. They have also led physicists to new areas of physics that haven't been explored before. This has given our current understanding of how the world works a good test of its validity. The more we learn about black holes, though, the better we understand them as our technology and ways of observing them improve. 
We don't fully understand black holes, though, because we can't see them directly. Since stellar mass black holes get very hot, billions of Kelvin hot, Exploration can only be done indirectly using ideas and methods that don't involve direct methods. As we already said, the event horizon is what makes black holes so interesting. It is a line in space-time where nothing, not even light, can escape. That is the most basic thing about black holes. This trait is more than just a solid mass with strong gravitational pull. It's a part of reality that we can't fully understand. When we get close to the event horizon, the rules of physics change in a big way but they still give us a look into the mysteries of these agents. We know for sure how some of these black holes come to be. An undeniable fact is that black holes are often formed when stars fall apart due to gravity. This happens when an object's own weight is too much for its internal pressure to hold it up against gravity. Scientists stress how important high-density areas are for this collapse. In this time period of the world, these kinds of densities are mostly found in stars. But in the early universe after the Big Bang, densities were much higher, which probably made it easier for black holes to form. To make a black hole, the mass must not only be very dense, but also be spread out randomly so that it doesn't become uniform. In order for primordial black holes to form in places that are so thick, the density must have changed at the start, which let the black holes grow through gravity. But gravity collapse isn't the only way that black holes are made. High-energy collisions can also make black holes if they get dense enough. But as of 2022, mass imbalances in particle accelerator tests have not directly or indirectly shown that this has happened. There are many interesting things about black holes, but the most interesting thing is how they change over time. They don't have set sizes, and by eating the stuff around them, they can keep growing forever. In order to stay alive, all black holes eat gas and dust from space, which causes them to grow exponentially. Another important quality that makes some supermassive black holes possible is this power. It has also been suggested that this process could be one way that intermediate black holes can form in globular groups. Black holes can also join with other things, like stars or even other black holes, to make a huge black hole. Black hole development is still being studied, and now that the James Webb Space Telescope is up and running, we will be able to find out even more. But there have been worries that a black hole could hit Earth and destroy it. But these worries are no longer valid thanks to experts who never give up. This can't happen because they showed it can't. In fact, the Earth would not be sucked into the event horizon if the Sun were switched out for a black hole of the same mass. Instead, it would spin around the black hole like the Earth spins around the Sun because their gravity pulls are the same. Also, black holes don't move through space and eat celestial things like planets, moons, and stars. Because of this, Earth as a world would not be destroyed by a black hole because there aren't any close to our solar system. Lastly, the Sun can't turn into a black hole because it doesn't have enough mass to close in on itself. Going back to the James Webb Telescope, Scientists using this amazing telescope have just made an amazing discovery that is shaking our understanding of the universe to its core. What huge, strange thing did they find in the depths of space? We'll have to wait for more information about this finding that is changing everything we thought we knew about the universe. This high-tech gadget, the James Webb Space Telescope, can not only see close celestial objects, but it can also find things from a very long time ago. About 400 items in the near sphere of our solar system that were not known before have been found. This is the latest success. The scientific community is very excited about this discovery, which shows how much the telescope has changed our knowledge of the universe. Remember that Earth, stars, and galaxies are spread out in space and make up only about 5% of the universe. There are probably a lot of other possibilities deep in our world that we don't know about. This is a fact. As it stands, the James Webb Space Telescope is a major force that is shaking things up and revealing secrets one puzzle at a time. The Webb is the start of a new era in space study. It will allow us to explore the mysteries of space that are beyond our wildest dreams. It has not only found many strange items in the dark and unexplored 95% of our universe, but it has also shown us how our world works. Over the course of time, many things have happened, but they are still hidden in the dark sky. Because of this, it's very important to find out the secrets of our world and the rules that govern it. The web is like a time machine that lets us go back in time and see the universe from the beginning of light to the birth of galaxies. As study goes on, a stunning discovery has changed the way we think about the universe. 
the telescope showed hundreds of very old galaxies that were formed as little as 600 million years after the Big Bang. The Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey Program on the James Webb Space Telescope, which people affectionately called JADES, is a big part of this important finding. The JADES project gives us the information we need to understand the early stages of star and galaxy creation. With today's technology, the web still changes how we think about and show how big the universe is, unlocking the mysteries that time and space have hidden. Scientists spent a lot of time using the Space Telescope to carefully study, sort, and determine the types of faint, faraway galaxies. A student at the University of Texas at Austin named Ryan Ensley was a key member of this group. His main area of study is galaxies that were around at the start of the universe, between 500 and 800 million years after the Big Bang. This time was known as the Epoch of Reionization by experts. According to Ensley's and other scientists' research, the universe was covered in a fog of gas right after the Big Bang. For many years, this made it impossible for powerful light to reach. About one billion years after the Big Bang, this mist cleared, revealing darkness. This was the start of cosmic transparency, also known as reionization. A lot of scientists thought that this time of change might have been caused by active, supermassive black holes or galaxies full of hot, young stars. Ensley and his colleagues used the Webb Near-Infrared Spectrograph device as part of the JADES program to help them study these galaxies. The goal of their work was to find signs of star creation, which led to amazing discoveries. Interestingly, almost all of the galaxies they looked at had emission line signatures that were much stronger than normal. This is a clear sign that new stars have been forming recently. Ensley says that the main source of the needed heat came from the supernova explosions of the very large early stars. The study also found that the birth of stars in these young galaxies followed a pattern of long cycles of strong star formation and short periods of ionization, during which the activity of star birth dropped significantly. It was likely that big stars would quickly run out of fuel and explode in a supernova. As a result, they probably poured energy into their surroundings, making it possible for gas to condense and form new stars during times when the sky was quiet. As we learn more about how the universe came to be, Jades takes the lead by throwing a wide net to catch the galaxies that were around less than 400 million years ago, when the universe was still very young. The main ideas behind this study are what will help us figure out how stars formed in the first few thousand years after the Big Bang. The light from these galaxies is changed as it travels through the expanding universe, even though they are very far away, many light years. In general, as the universe expands, light is stretched to longer wavelengths that make it look redder. This is called redshift. Redshift is a way for astronomers to figure out how far away galaxies are. It can also be used to find galaxies that formed early in the universe. Our studies were limited to just a few dozen galaxies with a redshift greater than 8 before the web came along. A redshift of 8 means that the universe was less than 650 million years old at that time. The JADES program, on the other hand, has completely changed our skills and allowed us to find almost a thousand of these very faraway galaxies. Scientists usually figure out what kind of spectrum a galaxy has by looking at how bright it is at a lot of wavelengths that are close together. But there is another way to do it. Take pictures of the galaxy through filters that only show certain bands of colors. This method gives a few measures of brightness at the same time, which makes it easier to figure out how far away thousands of galaxies are. The great thing about this method is that it works well, which lets scientists learn important things about the universe. The secrets of space are slowly being solved thanks to cutting-edge technologies and programs like JADES. This gives us a unique look into the early stages of how our universe formed. Also, Ensley wasn't the only professor who worked on the project. The near-infrared spectrograph was also used to take readings by Kevin Harrington from the University of Arizona in Tucson. It was possible to find over 700 galaxies that were active when the universe was 300 to 650 million years old, thanks to these readings, which are called photometric redshifts. The scholarly community around the world was shocked by this new information. The sheer number of these galaxies was much higher than what was expected, which shook the roots of what had been seen before. Before Webb was launched, scientists didn't know much about how these faraway galaxies changed over time. But the Webb has broken new ground by showing us views that the Hubble telescope had not been able to see before. 
The telescope has found new objects in space and scientific wonders. It has also been used to find exoplanets and other space objects that might have signs of life. The call to look for life on other planets can be heard in the area of experts who work. Since it was launched, the James Webb Space Telescope has been putting out amazing pictures all the time. It has given us a look into the atmospheres of other celestial things that we have never seen before, and it has also helped us find new mysteries in the Milky Way and beyond. These discoveries include the exciting chance of life on Proxima Centauri b, which is also called Alpha Centauri cb. This could be the site of the first colony outside of our solar system. This secret discovery is the kind of guesswork that gets people thinking, and this exciting event represents the Webb's mission. Scientists think that Proxima Centauri b is a very important exoplanet because it is in the habitable zone of its red dwarf host star, Proxima Centauri. The star Proxima Centauri is the closest to our Sun. It is part of the large Alpha Centauri triple star system and is very close to our solar system. Proxima Centauri b has gotten a lot of attention as a possible world like Earth. This extrasolar planet finishes its orbit around its parent star about 7.5 million kilometers away. It takes about 11.2 Earth days to complete one orbit. Proxima Centauri b is a planet that looks a lot like Earth. It has a radius a little bigger than Earth's and a mass at least 1.07 times that of Earth. Even though the Webb Space Telescope showed that it is in the habitable zone, proof of its atmosphere is still hard to come by. This doubt comes from the fact that Proxima Centauri is a flare star, which means it sends out very strong electromagnetic radiation that can remove the atmospheres of planets. The search to clear up this doubt continues, with hopes resting on observations that will come after this one. The exoplanet Proxima Centauri b is very interesting. It is much closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. It's important to know how old it is, though, in order to understand its past. Computer models are being used by scientists to find out more about how it came to be. Their study has taught them a lot about Proxima Centauri b, such as how the planet gets its heat and how it spins. Even though it looks a lot like Earth, it probably formed in a different way, with less water and stronger impacts. Through projects like Breakthrough Starshot, plans are already in place to send robots to study Proxima Centauri b. These steps might help us find proof of life on this interesting extrasolar world. As we keep looking into things and finding new things, Proxima Centauri b could be a great place to find alien life. We can't wait to find out what experts find next. Thanks for watching this episode. Click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one while you're still here.